Good morning. This is the worship service coming up for April the 24th, the first Sunday after Easter. On this day, many years ago, our Savior was still on the earth in his risen body. He was meeting with his disciples. He was uh, with us for more than a full 40 days on earth after he was raised from the dead. With many infallible proofs, he presented himself, so says Luke, to many, many people. So the eyewitness accounts is what he was doing and establishing, and we believe their account because the Word of God has absolutely proven to be accurate in every way. Uh, before I get started on the service, I want to give a shout out to Sue Rojack. Sue moved to Florida. I've mentioned her before, and Sue, you are a great faithful person to our ministry at the church, and I thank you for your friendship. I thank you for always being there for us, and I hope the broadcast brings you a little closer to the fellowship of Christ Presbyterian Church that misses you so much. Also, I want to say that we are glad to see so many people returning now to the church, but there are an awful lot of you who have not returned since COVID, and that's been two years now. I hope you've not found another church, because selfishly, I'd like to keep you with us. If you have, and that's where the Lord has led you to be able to give your gifts to others to further the worship of Christ, and where you can also receive blessing from God in His Word, then more power to you. But if you're just not coming back, I hope that you will reconsider that. Come back. We miss you. We miss you when we sing. We miss you when we read. We miss your fellowship after church and your prayers. Most of all, we miss your prayers. So come on back. And if you're watching this uh, service and would like to keep me videotaping as we get back to full life, send me an email, jamesnmcguire at yahoo.com. J-A-M-E-S-N. M-C-G-U-I-R-E at yahoo.com. James N. McGuire and say, yes, I'm watching. Please keep recording. Also, um, we are in need of a regular pianist to accompany our worship services. We are finding uh, different individuals per Sunday, but we'd like to have a consistent voice at the piano who can lead us in our worship. So if you have any suggestions, Please contact me again. You can call the church. You can call my phone, 248-444-9487. Or you can email me, jamesnmcguire at yahoo.com, and let me know some possibilities for people to be a regular uh, weekly pianist here at our church. Now, during the service this week, we're going to sing four hymns. This is my Father's World. We're going to have a call to worship from Psalm 104, which speaks of the works of the Lord in the uh, in the world, what he does to show his glory. We're going to sing, O oh, worship the King, all glorious above. We're going to sing, of course, the glory of Patri, and that's what we worship with, even as Jesus worshiped in the synagogues when he was there. They had the word of God. They sang the word of God from the Psalms. They read the scriptures and they exhorted one another. And that's what church is all about. It's not about entertainment. It's about seriously engaging with God who is speaking to us in his holy word. We will have the spoken call to worship and the invocation of the Lord's Prayer, the first two scripture readings of the four that we have every week. This week, the first two are Genesis 1, 1 through 3. And Genesis 2, 1 through 9, that's the first reading. Then, Jonathan, then John 1, 1 through 5. Then the next time we have a reading, it's Psalm 8. And Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3, that we read responsibly. So this is the outline for the service. And it is by faith that we understand. So I want to read to you the critical text this morning from Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by faith 
the men of old gained approval. That is, they gained approval with God. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Let's, let's give a quick prayer to the Lord. Father, hear us. Send your Holy Spirit that we may believe. For that we know the word will either harden our hearts or make us alive to your dear Son. We ask that you make us alive. Through this word, we ask it in Jesus' name, he to whom you gave all authority. Amen. In Genesis 1, we don't find an argument for the proof that God exists. It just simply says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The reality of God is so basic that mankind since the beginning has not doubted that there is a God who has made all things. Now often man is confused about God's identity, but we are born with the knowledge that God is and that all things are made by him. There's oftentimes confusion over who God is, but there is no, uh, among mankind, but there is no uh, question that men in every age, in every continent, in every language, and every race have known there is a God and seek to find him and worship him. The Bible doesn't, the Bible is written to tell us the identity of God and what he has done for us, that we may in turn love him. So Genesis 1 is not written to convince us that God is. It's written to enlighten us as to who God is and how he interacts with us. In Romans 1, 18 through 23, we are told that all men, that includes women, know there is a God but refuse to worship him as God and so choose to worship something in the creation as God. Here's what it reads. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So God's divine power and his divine nature have been revealed in everything that is physical. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, and birds, and animals, and creeping things. The fact that there are idols proves that men know there is a God, and the idols come about because men refuse to worship God as God. And so their minds are darkened, and they create idols for themselves out of created things. So mankind, the scripture says, knows God is. Nevertheless, Hebrews says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. There are several questions raised from the assertion in Hebrews 11 that God created all things out of nothing. The first question is this. Did the universe really create itself? The scripture says, obviously, no. Beginning with the very first verse of the Bible and concluding with the very last verse, God created all things. The universe is not self-existent. It does not give birth to itself. Solids, liquids, and gases did not create themselves. The universe that did not exist 
cannot decide that it would exist. If you deny that there is a creator God, you are left with only one conclusion. And that is, whatever is, always has been, and always will be. It never had a beginning. It never has an end. The question, how did this universe begin, will be answered. Well, it had no beginning. It just is. That defies all need in man for logical explanations because everything else is logical. This answer defies all that man knows. And to believe it makes one a fool. To adopt this answer that the universe simply created itself is to say there is no God. The only God is what exists. Walter Isaacson was a noted expert and biographer on the life of Albert Einstein. He wrote a, the first biography to tackle Einstein's enormous volume of personal correspondence. Einstein wrote a lot of letters. It's known as the enormous body of, of correspondence. Isaacson wrote an article in 2007 in the issue of Time magazine entitled Einstein and Faith. And here's what he wrote. When Albert Einstein was asked if he believed in God, here was his response. I am not an atheist. I don't think I can call myself a pantheist. The problem involved is too vast for our limited minds. We are in the position of a little child entering a huge library filled with books in many languages. The child knows someone must have written those books. It doesn't know how. The child doesn't understand the languages in which they are written. The child dimly suspects a mysterious order in the arrangement of the books on the shelves. But he doesn't know what it is. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of even the most intelligent human being toward God. We see the universe marvelously arranged in obeying certain laws, but only dimly do we understand these laws. The most beautiful emotion we can experience is the mysterious. It is the fundamental emotion that stands at the cradle of all true art and science. He to whom this emotion of mystery is a stranger who can no longer wonder and stand wrapped in awe is as good as dead, a snuffed out candle. To sense that behind anything that can be experienced, there is something that our minds cannot grasp, whose beauty and sublimity reaches us only indirectly. This is religiousness. In this sense, and in this sense only, Einstein said, I am a devoutly religious man. He can't say who God is, but he knows God is there because nature itself and the laws of the universe demand that of him. No one can demonstrate how the world began. We'd have to be there. But by faith in Genesis 1, we understand that God spoke and his words created the universe. Psalm 33, 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. So the question, did the universe create itself? Hebrews 11, 3 says, not at all. Then there's a second question raised by the assertion that God made all things out of nothing, and that is this. How much would you have to know to know there's no God? You'd have to know everything there is to know. How much do you have to know to know that God is? Like Einstein and billions of people before him, you simply look at creation, and that demands the existence of God. Consider the human ear. How, did, how could mindless, purposeless, meaningless, random chance know that there are sound waves and to know how to fashion a brain with nerves and an external ear with internally connected tiny bones that vibrate in the inner ear to catch sound waves that no one can see. How would mindless, purposeless, random chance know that it needs an ear if it's going to 
by totally uh, no purpose, creating a, a head that needs to hear those sound waves. The word random means lacking any definite plan or order or purpose, governed by or depending on chance. And the word chance means without plan or intent, accidentally. There is a clear order of things in the universe, not random chance. The universe is not its own creator. Everything in the universe. Look at, look at my eyes. How would random, purposeless, meaningless chance that is never organizing anything because it's random know that there's light beams and construct an eyeball that can read those eye, eye, that light and see reflection of things in the brain and send it back to the mind. How could that happen? Look at my face. There's a nose. How could random, purposeless, meaningless chance know that there's oxygen in the air and create a body, a mammal, that needs to exchange oxygen in its blood, which is purely randomly created anyway. It shouldn't be in the same day, the same way twice in the same day. How could it know that? Well, of course it can't. It's absurd to say that random, meaningless, purposeless chance can occur, can account for everything you see around you. The universe is screaming, demanding that we acknowledge the Creator, His wonder, His power, and His deity. That everything in its intricacy, in, intricacy, pardon me, was created by design, not random chance. God spoke and stuff was created. By faith, with the evidence around us, we understand that the Word of God made the universe out of nothing. By the way, did you hear the one about the smartest man to ever live who knew all the secrets of the physical universe? Who challenged God saying he could match whatever God could do, he could do? So God bent down and picked up a handful of dirt and made two beautiful birds of dozens of colors that took wing and flew away. The man said, Ha! I can do that. So he bent down to pick up a handful of dirt, and God said, Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You have to make your own dirt. This power of God to create out of nothing is what we depend on for our resurrection from the dead. I am dirt. You are dirt. You leave me on the top of the ground or, in, or even underground. And eventually I return to the stuff from which I'm made. I am a form of dirt which God has made. We are God's dirt. All that you are has been made out of nothing by the word of God. He speaks and dirt appears. He speaks and the dirt lives and it's born to your mother or to you as your children are born. God speaks to you at the resurrection day when you are dead dirt. And you live again. You would have to know all things in order to propose there is no God. But since all things have purpose, the presence of God is demanded. And then Hebrews 11.3 tells us, or raises a third question. And, the, and that is, that God made all things out of nothing. And what is the purpose of the creation? Hebrews 11 and the whole of the Bible explains the purpose of creation. The purpose of all creation is to reveal the Creator's being, wisdom, power, justice, holiness, goodness, and truth. These are the invisible attributes of God we understand when we fully look at the creation with the, with the eyes of faith. And all of these attributes of God's wonderful character are grasped ultimately by the hand of faith that is certain that behind all we can see there is the God of the Bible, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. God, who is good and cannot do evil, and who means you good. As the scripture says in Romans 8, if God is for us, who can be against us? Your purpose in being created is to know God by faith and to love him by doing what he commands. God commended all the persons in chapter 11 of Hebrews, that long list of people that we will look at, God willing, over the, over the Sundays to come. God created all of them and commended them because they trusted him. They believed what he had to say, and that's faith. The first question in our Presbyterian Catechism says, What is the chief end of man? And the answer is, man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. That's your purpose. How do we glorify God, the Catechism asks? The answer is by loving him and doing what he commands. That brings God glory. For we have put him in his right position, and we are not fashioning idols out of created things, but we are worshiping, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. So in conclusion, to say that we believe that God created all things by his word alone is to raise and answer three questions. The first question is, did the universe create itself? To say that nothing creates, to say that nothing creates something is philosophical suicide. It's madness. God's word is the something that created everything in the universe. And the order and the beauty and the, the, the infinite ways, it would seem infinite, the ways that God has created all things and the purpose that denies that anything could possibly be random demands that God created all things out of nothing. And the second question raised by the assertion that God created all things by his word alone is how much would you have to know that to know in order to say there is no God? Well, you'd have to know all things, which is impossible for man to do, and all things that we do know witness against random, purposeless, meaningless chance. Everything shows God's nature and his power. Everything has cause and order and purpose. And then the third question that is raised by the assertion that God created all things out of nothing by the power of his word is this. What is the purpose of all creation, including man? And the purpose of all creations, according to the scriptures, is to bring glory to God, its maker, and to enjoy him forever. I hope your faith is fully grounded. We don't know how God created the universe except he did it by his word. But what mechanisms he used, we do not know and we cannot know. They are beyond being discovered. But what we know is there is a loving God in heaven who at the right time sent his only begotten Son to redeem us from sin, which our first parents had fallen into, by permission of God, so that by the plan of salvation, we will be delivered from the world of decay and be transferred into the kingdom of his dear Son, where there will be no more decay, no more death, no crying, no sorrow, no any of those things that belong to this dying world. We know God has redeemed us because his word says so. Let us pray. Our Father, enable us to believe your holy word, for without faith it is impossible to please you. For he who comes to you must believe that you are, and that you reward those who diligently seek you. We are those who diligently seek you. Lord, bind up the brokenhearted, the grieving, Give strength to the oppressed and the victims of this world set upon by evil men. We ask you to destroy those who make war, who wish to kill and to steal and to murder and to lie 
Those things belong to the kingdom of Satan. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to come quickly, even this day. Put away sin and punish wickedness for the final time and redeem your people who will glorify your name forever. So help us, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. After the scriptures, we sing our final hymn, and then we have a final reading of scripture together, and then we go out into the world. So re receive the benediction, the good word from scripture. Now may the grace of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, rest and abide upon all who love him in sincerity. For Jesus' sake. Amen.